name. Tonight, we're still talking about signs and wonders. Somebody help me. Signs and wonders. Let heaven hear your voice. And it will come to you tonight in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come to you on behalf of everyone connected with this crusade right now. And I pray tonight will be a night of the supernatural. Tonight will be a night of heaven coming down upon every life in Jesus' name. Salvation free. Healing free. Deliverance free. The supernatural connection free. And solution to every problem tonight. Giving free to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray as the message comes on, you'll be distributing signs and wonders to everyone. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Calabar, amen, before you sit down. God bless you. You can sit down now. We're coming to the book of Daniel. And in the book of Daniel, we're looking at chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. Tonight, I'm talking to you on the timeless testimony of signs and wonders. Testimony up to date that is still happening today. Timeless testimony of signs and wonders. And then... The people who are giving the testimony to us tonight, number one, Nebuchadnezzar. Number two is King Darius. And then number three, you are going to find Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they stand up to tell us how great our God is. The God of the supernatural and the God of deliverance. And that same God is coming to you today. He will change everything that needs to be changed in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Open your Bible. If you have a Bible there, if you don't have a Bible, I'll read it to you from Daniel chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I did hear your amen. When a wicked king, a notorious king, an idolatrous king, a wicked one that, is, that was wicked beyond the definition of wickedness. When it comes up to say, it's talking about signs and wonders, you can be sure it's a testimony that something had happened. And just like you are there tonight, something will happen to you. Something good something gracious something powerful and mighty will happen to you tonight in jesus name look at verse 2 look at verse 2 there in verse 2 i thought it good that's nebuchadnezzar talking i thought it good to show signs and wonders look at that nebuchadnezzar said I thought it would be good for me to give you a testimony, a timeless testimony. He said, I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. Look at that. If God can work miracles in the life of Nebuchadnezzar, it will work miracles in your life. If the Lord can do signs and wonders in the life of such a simple, notorious, bad, worst of all people that ever lived on earth, if God can do miracles, if God can bring healing, if God can bring deliverance, if God can do signs and wonders in his kingdom, 
And then he can now come out and say, I thought it would be good for you to leave Vienna to my testimony. If he did that for him, he'll do it for you. I see miracle coming your way. I see salvation coming your way. And I see signs and wonders coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. Look at this, how great in verse 3 are his signs, great signs. And then he says, how mighty are his wonders. You see those two words there again, coming from the mouth of Nebuchadnezzar. He says, how great are his signs. Then he says, how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And his dominion is from generation to generation. This is another generation. The generation of Nebuchadnezzar is gone. But he then assures us, he says, his power, his glory, his kingdom it is from generation to generation. And in this generation, a miracle will happen to you. Like the Lord God Almighty gave mighty signs and great wonders in the life of that man in that generation. It's your turn. Where are you? It's my turn. Say that. Remember, it is free. You don't have to pay anything. Salvation tonight is free for you. Healing tonight is free for you. And the power of the Lord penetrating your life like an explosive and then blowing away every walk of the devil destroyed in your life tonight, it is free. You'll be a partaker in Jesus' name. Now, that is Nebuchadnezzar. And he gives us the testimony that God is yeah, the God of signs and wonders. Look at Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 25. Here is another king. Then King Darius wrote unto all people and nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. He made his testimony global. And he says, I'm Darius. I'm king. I'm sending this testimony, timeless testimony to all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. You won't say amen to that one? Look at verse 26. In verse 26, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. That's my God. The God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's my God. The God of Abraham, Israel, and Isaac, that's my God. The God that opened the Red Sea, that's my God. And the God that brought them out, and there was no one feeble man among them, that's my God. The God who saves, and the God who heals, and the God who delivers, and the God who can stop the mouth of the lion, that is my God. Who is your God? Idol of wood. I said, who is your God? The one they put a, a pot upside down and they are pouring oil. Is that your God? Broken pot. Is that your God? Stone. Is that your God? Let the God of heaven, the God of signs and wonders, the God of all power, and the God that has dominion from generation to generation, make him your God tonight, wonders will happen in your life. He says he is the living God. Look at that. Look at Darius saying he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom that we shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even to the end. Look at verse 27. Verse 27 says he delivers. That's our God. He will deliver you. He rescues that's how God, it will rescue you. And 
look at what Darius is saying, look at this, look at this, and he walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. And whatever lion, that running lion that is walking about, wanting to crush you and destroy your life, the Lord will deliver you tonight. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And every work of the devil in your life is destroyed tonight in Jesus' name. The timeless testimony of signs and wonders from Nebuchadnezzar, from Darius, from Daniel, from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and from me. And for you is coming your way. Tonight you'll be saved. Tonight you'll be delivered. Tonight you'll be healed in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at before we pray. The prayer tonight will catch you wherever you are. If you're outside, it will meet you there. If you're inside, it will meet you there. If you're online, this prayer tonight will reach you in your place in Jesus' name. Three things. Number one. Number one, signs and wonders for the worst of sinners. Signs and wonders for the worst of sinners. Number two, slaves of wantonness found wanting and short-sighted. Slaves of wantonness, debauchery, licentiousness, fleshly practices, slaves of evil and slaves of immorality. They are found wanting and short-sighted. Number three, seekers of wonders with willingness to surrender. As you come to the Lord tonight and you say, you are my Lord, you are my Savior, I surrender myself to you. While you are saying that, miracle will meet you there. The mercy of God will reach you there. And everything that is problem in your life, all the problems, everything today, vanishes away in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, number one, signs and wonders for the worst of sinners. We're coming to Daniel chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 34. It says in verse 34 of Daniel chapter 4, it says, I and I, at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar. It says, don't miss it. I'll tell you my name. I'm the one that is given. Testimony tonight, it says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praise and honor him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation that's the man we refer to as the worst of sinners why would why do we say that this is the man that raised up an idol and said everybody on earth shall worship that idol and he said if there is anyone anywhere that will not worship that idol i'll catch him throw him into the fire and then he said tell me which god can deliver that man out of my hand that the kind of man the kind of sinner the kind of rebel and the kind of blasphemer he was his name nebuchadnezzar and then all the people, he said, when you hear the drama and you hear the music that I put forth and I told those musicians to begin to play, you fall down and worship. He said, I do not recognize any other God anywhere, anytime. And then the people, they feared him. 
He was a cruel man. He was a wicked man. And whatever he said, he will do. He will do. And whatever he said, he will do it to his servants if he wanted to kill them because they did not obey him. That he will do. The worst of sinners. And eventually God allowed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, three standing men, three upright men and three faithful men and they said we will not bow to any idol like you are saying tonight you will not bow to any idol i will not bow to any idol after you give your life to the lord and salvation comes in free salvation full salvation when salvation comes to your heart the power to stand and the power to be different from all the other sinners in the world who are bending down and bowing down to idol the power to stand the lord will give you in jesus name you know after you are saved the lord will give the spirit of shadrach meshach and abednego it will put that inside your heart if they say everybody bow to say no i stand for jesus anybody there I stand for Jesus. If they say, eat all those things, sacrifice to idols, they say, no, I take the word of God and no evil thing will come into my life anymore. Then somebody came to report them and said, O oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, there are three people in your kingdom. As you said, everybody should bow, everybody should bend. These three people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will not bow, they will not bend. They said, What? In my kingdom? Don't they recognize who I am? And don't they recognize if I say I will do anything, I will do it? They said, Call them here. And then they called them. They said, What am I hearing? I hear that you will not bend, you will not bow. Now, I'm going to give you a second chance. When you hear that music, it's for the whole nation. And this is, was their national religion. If you bow down, I'll forget the past, and then I'll release your But If you don't bow, if you don't bend, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? That's how bad, how sinful, how terrible, how blasphemous Nebuchadnezzar was. And yet, this was of sinners eventually received a miracle. I think there's hope for you. I say there is hope for you. Whatever sin you have committed, even if you are the worst in the village, and the worst in the town, and the worst in our state here, and the worst of sinners, anywhere you are, if this man, Nebuchadnezzar, the worst of sinners, if God forgave him, if God set him free, if God changed his life, a change is coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. But no, in his sin, he said, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we're not careful to answer you, O king. If you want to do that, I want to assure you, we're not going to bow down to your idol. And our God is able. Say, my God is able. Our God is able to deliver us from your hand, O king. The man was furious. He was more angry than anybody on earth had ever been angry. He said, his chief men should take Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and then put them in the fire. In the furnace, actually. And those people that took them, the fire was so hot and the flame that came out of the furnace Bunch those people to death. And then, as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got in, they fell down because they threw them there. And then, all the cords that bound them, all those cords were burnt off. Every cord of the devil that binds you today, everything will burn off. 
every yoke of the devil that pins you down to the world and to the things of the devil tonight all that yoke will be destroyed in jesus name and shadrach meshach and abednego rose up and then jesus came out from heaven and he was in their midst and they were walking in the fire you will walk through the fire and the fire will not burn you and then Nebuchadnezzar did not know what had happened. He said, let me peep into that furnace and see what has happened to those foolish boys who said they were going to serve God and they will not serve my idol. And then as he looked in, he said, what am I seeing? One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Then he turned to his people and said, tell me, did not we cast three men into the furnace of fire? They said, yes, O king. He said, I can see four. They will see four. He said, and the fourth one is like the appearance of the Son of God. And they put you in the furnace, Jesus will come and meet you there any dungeon any prison jesus will come and meet you there and then eventually he brought them out but he wasn't converted then in chapter four now again he was walking around babylon he said this is babylon that is built by the power of my might and then judgment came from heaven and then he was struck and became like an animal. He was driven into the forest. He was actually eating grass like an animal. And for seven seasons, it was like that. But then when that came, his mind turned. His mind said, I've been fighting against God and he doesn't favor me. He doesn't favor anyone to fight against God. And then he returned in his mind unto the Lord. As he returned unto the Lord, that's how a change came. The mind of an animal was taken away. His mind became the mind of a man. And all his counselors, they sought after him. And he became king again. And the Lord restored him into the position that he had lost. Tonight, God will forgive you. He forgave Nebuchadnezzar. He will forgive you. He changed the heart and the mind of Nebuchadnezzar as he turned to the Lord. As you turn to the Lord tonight, the Lord will change your heart in Jesus' name. And then he became an honorable person, a dignified person, a beloved person. And now he said, I'm going to tell you what the Lord has done. He received signs and wonders, even though he was the worst of sinners. That's why I bring the good news to you tonight. And I'm telling you, just at the mention of the name of Jesus, your Savior, at the mention of the name of Jesus, your Lord, at the mention of the name of Jesus, the one that died for you on the, cal on the cross of Calvary, all your past sins will be forgiven. And then he will tell you, salvation is free. I gave it to Nebuchadnezzar. I'm giving it to you now. And you will receive in Jesus' name. Hey, do you remember Paul, the apostle, that became the greatest of all the apostles? He was a bad man too, a wicked man too. He was persecuting the church. Too. In fact, he himself said, I was the chief of sinners. And God forgave him. And God set him free. Nebuchadnezzar in the Old Testament, Saul of Tarsus in the New Testament, the Lord turned them around and the Lord changed their lives. Now it is your turn. Who will be the next? I said who will be the next to give your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and for that free, full salvation to come unto you. You will be the next. There's testimony waiting for you already in Jesus' name.
I come to point number two now. Point number two, slaves of wantonness found wanting and short-sighted. Now, this is the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. And he became a king. Normally, the grandchildren, they refer to them in the Old Testament as the son of the other person. That's why when you read chapter 5 of Daniel, it will refer to Belshazzar as the son of Nebuchadnezzar. If you have your Bible there, his story is in Daniel chapter 5. And it is from verse 1. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1. It says in verse 1, Belshazzar king made a great feast to a thousand of his laws, and he drank wine before the thousand. You can see the description of the man, the life of the man, the habit of the man. You can see his position. You can see his religion. And then he says in verse 2, in verse 2 he says, Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princes and wives and his concubines might drink therein. He made this feast and then he was not satisfied with all the cups of gold and silver in his own in his own empire he said we conquered israel we conquered judah all their worshiping vessels go and bring them he wanted to drink wine out of them he was proving that he was greater than all those people of judah because his god is idol as sold at the at the um, conquered the children of judah and then he got his wives, many wives, and then concubines, many concubines, and all the counselors and everybody, he got them together. He said, drink and be merry. There's no God anywhere. There's no judgment anywhere. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall and of the king's palace and the king saw part the part of the hand that wrote then in verse 6 then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that his joints the joints of his loins were loose and his knees moved one against another you know, the, the person who have been bragging, uh, what will God do? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what can he do? The God of Judah, Jerusalem, what can he do? Bring the wine for me and bring uh, all the utensils for me. I will drink in them. Nothing will happen. And if they say heaven will fall, I don't care. Heaven is not going to fall on me alone. But judgment day had come. The people who wait for the judgment day. When that judgment day comes, they will not be able to stand. Look at Belshazzar now. You will not be like Belshazzar. Say, I will not be like Belshazzar. You know, gathering, gathering women, 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 wives, one is not sufficient. And concubines, concubines upon concubines. And he lived an, an easy life. A fleshly life. A worldly life, a, a life that spoiled him. He didn't have any character at all, even though he had a crown. There are people that have crowns, no character. They have certificate, no character. They have names, popularity, no character. They have women running after them, but there's no character. And what the Lord is looking at on the final day will be that character, not your crown. Not your certificate, not your profession, not your money, not your houses, not the land you have. It's looking for character. He wants people that will live according to the word of God and keep the commandments of God. 
but you have not you have not because the bible says all have sinned not only by shazam all have sinned and come short of the glory of god now judgment is coming and then his knees were knocking together and there was a writing on the wall he wanted somebody to help reach the writing on the wall look at verse 9 in verse 9 then was king Belshazzar greatly troubled and his countenance was changed in him and his lords were astonished they were astonished they were surprised there was nothing they could do and there was no solution to the problem there is no solution to the problem until the word of the lord comes to you plain and clear and then you can have a proper understanding a proper interpretation a proper application of that word unto you because judgment is coming if you will repent today if you will turn away from your sin today that judgment will not come upon you again he said the times of ignorance god went at the times of ignorance you see belshazzar was ignorant he did not understand that blasphemy against god will bring judgment he did not understand that a promiscuous life and immoral life going from this woman to that woman and from this uh, concubine to that concubine he did not know that that will bring venereal disease in his life he did not know that alcohol will turn him mad he did not know that all those things will spoil his life will destroy his life and it was a time of ignorance there are many people like that today they drink but they are ignorant they don't understand and they smoke they are ignorant they do not understand the consequence of that they blaspheme God they sin against God they sin in the public and they sin in the private they are ignorant they do not know what that will mean in their lives but you know if tonight you said I was ignorant that's why I was playing with Satan. I was ignorant. That's why I joined the cult. I was ignorant. That's why I did all those evil things I did. But this time of ignorance, God went at and now he commands all men everywhere to repent. As you say, I've heard the word of the Lord. I'm not ignorant anymore now. I know that a day of judgment is coming and I want to escape the judgment of God. God, the mercy of God will come to you. Am I talking to somebody there tonight? The favor of God, the grace of God will come to you in Jesus' name. Salvation. Somebody help me shout salvation. That's what we are getting tonight. Full and free salvation that comes from heaven and then all your sins are forgiven that one comes tonight and then the body of sin the guilt of sin and the yoke of sin and the punishment and the eternal judgment everything will pass away from you when the mercy of God that sets you free when that mercy comes you say Lord I come Lord I come and then while that passage I'm, I'm reading to you I'm quoting to you that say the time of ignorance God winked that but now he commands all men everywhere to repent he says because God has set a day in the which he will judge all the actions of men, all the transgressions of men. But now he raised up Jesus Christ and he is the mediator between you and God, between man and God. And as you receive that Jesus into your heart, praise the Lord. The Lord will not look at you as a sinner anymore. You become a son of God. A daughter of God and anywhere you go if Satan wants to touch you the Lord will say remove your hand from there that is my son evil will not come upon your life anymore in Jesus name 
But you know, Belshazzar did not understand all that. There was a writing, and then it greatly troubled him. He needed an interpreter. Look at verse 18 of that Daniel chapter 5. It says, O thou king, the most high God, give Nebuchadnezzar. Is Daniel talking to him now, thy father, a kingdom? and majesty and glory and honor then in verse 20 it says but when his heart was lifted up that's Nebuchadnezzar when his heart was lifted up his mind had in him pride he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him and then in verse 22 it says and thou his son Belshazzar, thou his son Belshazzar, are you a child of a pastor there? And you know your, your father, the pastor talks about salvation, he talks about restoration, he gives you the example of his life, how he reconciled with God, and yet, even though you know the life of your father, you still continue in sin judgment day is coming but if you will turn to the lord today and say lord i surrender the mercy of god will come to you today in jesus name did your parents buy a bible for you and then you have read the lives of samuel and the life of joseph and the life of daniel and the life of shadrach meshach and abednego and the life of mary the virgin and the lives of other people that followed after the lord and yet even though you have a bible in your hand and you go to church yet you are not following what you have read they had jesus to save them and they were saved but there you are you're still a sinner chewing sin drinking sin and eating sin and following gangs of sinners judgment day is coming but thank god today is your chance say today is my chance and the lord will recover your life and restore your life in jesus name for Belshazzar, it was different. Thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thy heart, do thou knewest all this. And then in verse 23, it says, But thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. When you are drinking, you lifted up yourself against the God of heaven. When you are following after those women and concubines, you lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. When you contradicted and disobeyed and broke the laws of God, the commandments of God, you lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the God of silver and gods of gold and of brass and iron and wood and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, thou hast not glorified. In verse 24, it says, Therefore then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. That is writing against every sinner. To start with, every bad thing you do, every evil thing you do, every sin you commit, whether small or great, whether it's a kind of copying other people, obeying other people, or living in sin, and they're not satisfied to live in sin by themselves, and they come to influence you, and then you, like a sheep that is meant for slaughter, you just follow them, everything is reaching down, and then then the judgment of God eventually is reaching down. But today is your chance for free salvation and free healing and free deliverance. If you will not wait, if you will not draw back too late, if you will say, today I come, salvation will come to you. 
deliverance will come to you and a miracle will come to you in Jesus name and now a writing came look at verse 25 this is the writing that was written many many take you for sin and then in verse 26 it says this is the interpretation of the sin many God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it God knows what we do not know he knows the number of days we're supposed to live he knows the time we're going to spend here and there are people maybe they have only one day left like Belshazzar and they're still doing like we're doing before they're still dancing and drinking and womanizing and doing all those things and then the bell rings they're gone into a lost eternity God knows the measure of your days. That's the reason why you need to be wise today and say, Lord, all those evil things I've been doing, I suspend them. I stop them. I will not continue in them anymore. But in the case of Meshach, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Verse 27, in verse 27, take hill, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. The Lord weighed his action. Commandment number one, on one side of the scale, his action on the other side of the scale, he couldn't measure up. Commandment number two, on one side of the, of the scale, and his life on the other scale, he couldn't measure up. And when he was measured with all the commandments of God, he was found wanting. He failed. He failed. And there was no mercy for him. He didn't even ask for forgiveness or mercy himself. Look at the commandments of God as the Lord measures your life with the commandments of God where do you stand commandment number one thou shalt not have any other God before me where do you stand commandment number two you will not make any image where do you stand number three you will not call the name of the Lord in vain where do you stand number four you remember the lost day to keep it holy holy and perfect and worship the Lord where do you stand and then commandment number five that you honor you respect your parents all the days of your life where do you stand then you will not kill you will not steal and you will not be a false witness where do you stand you will not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor where do you stand Belshazzar was weighed in the balances and was found wanting the Lord is weighing all your actions by him all actions are weighed by him all habits are weighed by him your character is weighed and it says he was weighed and found wanting the man was short-sighted he was so short-sighted he couldn't reach the writing on the wall but today mercy comes to you i said mercy comes to you look at verse 28 it says in verse 28 Paris, that kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Even the thing it was, you know, holding on to, I am the king, I will drink as much as I want to drink. He lost everything. The Lord is showing us that. He said, look at that man. He became a fool at the end of his life. Do you want to be like Belshazzar at the end of your life? Where are you? I will not be like Belshazzar. I will not be foolish. I will not be weighed and found wanting. I will seek the face of the Lord. And as you seek the face of the Lord, forgiveness and salvation will come to you in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three now. Number three, we're looking at seekers of wonders, seekers of wonders with willingness to surrender. Those are the people the Lord will pardon. Those are the people the Lord will bring signs and wonders in your life in Jesus' name. Seekers 
of wonders seekers of wonders you know the, the wonder will not just come to you as if you know god uh, says okay if you will not come i will come to you if you will not believe that's all right if you will not seek me that's all right i'll give you the wonders anyway no the wonders are not as cheap as that you must seek after the wonders of the lord and with the willingness to surrender unto the lord and as you do that tonight miracle will come to you we well, were in Kotonu, uh, Bene Republic. And this boy, 15 years of age, was brought by his parents from uh, the northern part of Bene Republic. His name, Adamu, born deaf and dumb, completely deaf and dumb, could not hear anything. But when the parents were coming from the village in the north, in the northern part of the Republic, they brought him. And then as we were preaching the word, and then I said, the power of God is coming upon you now, and we prayed, lo and behold, deaf ears opened. The mouth that could not talk before began to talk and we brought the boy and tested him. He could hear everyone. That's right, that's right. Put your hands together and give a calabar tap into the world. That's what happened. And then, that's all right now, that's all right now. And after that, when we finished that uh, crusade, they took the boy to the village. And when, they, when the villagers saw, and remember, there was no church, no single church, no kind of church in that village. The father just had about the program in Kotono and came. And then, uh, when everybody saw Adamu, and they said, Adamu, from where you coming? I'm coming from Kotono. And then, began to speak very well the chief of the village there gave us free land free land come and build that kind of church over here but you know you know why that happened they were seekers of wonders and if you will seek like that tonight and say i leave all my idols behind i leave all those bad things behind and i come into the lord that power will come to you tonight in that same crusade, there was a woman 40 years of age, and she is the name Christine. And I can remember that miracle very well because that miracle, even the president of the country, Bene Republic, heard about the miracle that the president before the president won, and he had to invite me and my team to his office. And we spoke about miracles, we spoke about the salvation of the Lord, and by the grace of God, eventually he surrendered his life to the Lord. He himself now is a real child of God, let me come back to Sister Christina. She was at the last stage of HIV. And the children, sons and daughters, they brought her. And she was on a stretcher. And they laid her down. And they were, you know, some of the children on this side, another one on that side. And then I prayed the message, and the woman was so weak, she could not stand. She was so weak, she could not walk, and she was just lying down helplessly there. And then we began to pray, the kind of prayer we're going to pray tonight. And that prayer will turn your life around if you're seeking the wonders of the Lord in Jesus' name. And then as we prayed, in the middle of the prayer, in the middle of the prayer, we had not said the final amen. Christine, a 40 year old mother at the last stage of HIV age and totally weak, got up by herself. The, the sons and the daughters, they didn't know when that happened. And then she got up and then she started running not walking she was running and when we said the final amen and we said in jesus name we pray the children opened their eyes they couldn't see their mother and then they were looking for her. mama where are you mama where are you mama was exercising her new strength 
and she was running and they ran after her and then when they got her they thought she was mad and then she started laughing and she said i am not mad i am healed power somebody shout power power came upon her life because she was seeking seeking and she was seeking with a willing heart to surrender i know you are there tonight and if you're seeking the lord and you want to surrender to the lord something will happen in your life power will come into your life anointing will break every yoke in your life that's why jesus said but well, seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness when you raise up your hand that you want to receive the lord that's seeking the kingdom of god and his righteousness when you stand up and you say i confess my sin i abandon my sin i will not go back into those sins anymore you're seeking the wonders of the lord the wonder of salvation the wonder of healing the wonder of deliverance the wonder of power from on high seek ye first the kingdom of god and this righteousness and then all these things shall be added unto you all these things shall be added unto you where are you all these things shall be added unto you healing added power added deliverance added solution to your problem added all all somebody shout all all the good things you are looking for will be added to your life in jesus name it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed the lord is giving you the chance tonight even if they're the worst of sinners there's salvation for you tonight the worst of sinners there's forgiveness for you tonight the worst of sinners there is pardon there is peace for you tonight just indicate and as you raise up your hand and then you stand up that forgiveness will come to you judgment will not come anymore evil will not come anymore the peace of god will settle in your heart it's bowed and eyes closed if you want the salvation of the lord you want the pardon of your sin and you want the freedom that Christ gives redemption, righteousness that he gives, raise up your hand uh, anywhere you are. Praise the Lord. That's you there. That's you there. That's you there. Make it a date with the Lord. A day of appointment. A day of salvation for you. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Uh, I want Jesus to be my savior. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I surrender. I'm willing to surrender my life completely to the Lord. Raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand anywhere you are, please stand up. Please stand up. The Lord wants to see you. God bless you there. 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 Stand up wherever you are at the gallery on the ground floor, anywhere you are outside. Stand up and demonstrate that you want to have Jesus as your personal Savior. And as you are standing up, tell the Lord, confess your sins of the past, like uh, the sins of Beshazzar, all the things you have committed. You tell the Lord, I'm sorry. Now I surrender. Now I surrender. I give my heart. I give my life unto the Lord Jesus Christ. He will receive you. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And immediately that salvation is coming to you right now. Amen. 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 Let me pray with you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for all these new sons and new daughters who are coming to Christ now according to your promise forgive them in jesus name change their hearts change their lives and the things they used to do that was to bring judgment upon them help them to dislike all those things and not to want to do them anymore in jesus name 
let your spirit be a witness in their hearts that now the children of God, their sins are forgiven. Freedom has come to them. Free salvation, true salvation has come to them right now. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. Thank you, Lord, for the salvation you have given them. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing there. Our state overseer will come now and direct us in this time of uh, getting the names and the details of the people that have given their lives to the Lord. Uh, please remain standing. After that, I'm going to come back and today, signs and wonders will happen in your life. Let me hear Calabai men before I sit down. Keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. Our leaders going now, going now quickly and take their data. Make sure that you're accurate. Don't be in a hurry. Be accurate. Name, contacts, address, email, if any. Just be patient with them. House one to ten and the member, please let's go ahead now. Write boldly in capital letters. Be careful with the digits so there'll be no mistake, no omission. Tonight they will receive a message from us. Now for us that are born again already, buy a hair and be praying God. Tonight, visit me. Visit me. This is the third day, the third day of the, of the crusade. Visit me. No matter the problem, the sickness, I will go back healed. Be praying now in your heart. Our leaders, be fast. Take time with them. Don't just say Musa or Akim. That's no address. Be definite. Be definite and check up the, the, the digits. Is it MTN? Is it ETL? Make sure that they are accurate and correct so I don't miss them. Let's go ahead. When you are true, you know what to do so to indicate that you are done. Those of us coming now, you are late. Tomorrow, 7 30, make sure you are here. Our leaders, our core coordinators, be attentive now. You now collect the data, the slips, the slips, and transfer to e follow up tonight. Write in capital letters and sign it. Sign your name. So if you have any problem, we'll, we'll get at you. The package for them, okay. Hall 8 is done. Hall 8 is done. But keep, keep standing there also. Hall 8 is done already. The package for them, don't give them. We shall give them on 1st of August in a banquet in all the regions, all the groups, all the states, all the nations, if you like. But our own time here is 2 p.m. For your own time, you may choose a time there in your nation. That's all conducive for you. For us here in, in, in Calabar, in Cross River, 2 p.m. all over the region on 1st of August. The addresses are there on the, on the program on your, on your hand. When you are done, show us how seven is done, how six is done also, how ten is done. God bless you. God bless you. We're waiting for others. All right, how two is done, how two is done. How two, how six, waiting for others. All right, the member by my right is done also. God bless you. God bless you. The expectant, 
the word of God is coming to us now to you for healing. Don't panic. Don't be anxious. Don't struggle. Just free. Tonight is your night. It's my night. We live here tonight with testimony. Come out here to testify to God's glory. Waiting for you, our leaders, to tidy up our data collectors, be fast and yet be careful so you don't make any mistake. Remember tomorrow, 7 30 a.m. at the service evening, 3 p.m. You can see now the pastor is done. Come early, you go early. Waiting for you. Some of us are not done yet. Are you outside? Are you by the gates? The same thing you'll be doing in, in all states now, all the, all the nations. Don't be ob, 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 observers or spectators. Check up with them, those who are born again. Take the elders because there will be a banquet 1st of August in all the states, in all the nations. When you are done, let us know. All right. Or three or two is done. God bless you. Or two is done. Or one is done also. God bless you. Thank you. Let's tidy up. If you are coming now, please settle down to see how God can have pity on you and bless you also. Whatever is your problem, be telling God now. As the pastor will come now for miracle prayer, visit me, Lord. Visit me. That terminal problem, that terminal disease, tonight they will vanish away by the grace of God. Yes, when you are done, remaining her three. Are you done? Let us know. Her three. All right. Her three is done. Her three is done. God bless you. Now, settle down now. Settle down. You are coming now. You are late. Take a seat somewhere. The pastor is coming now. He's coming now. Testimony time. Praise the Lord. You are ready for your miracle. I said, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Seekers of wonders with willingness to surrender. As we have surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, every sickness, every infirmity, every impossibility, and every challenge and problem in your life, the Lord is touching you right now. And when you hear the final amen, check up your life and check up the child you brought, the miracle will have happened there. Your blind eyes will open. Your deaf ears will open. Dumb tongues will speak out. And if you are lame, paralyzed, after the final amen, you are not paralyzed anymore, give action and expression to your faith. As you stand up, power will meet you right there. And whatever the problem you have, the Lord is touching you now. I will receive. I will receive. And you'll demonstrate it. Lay your hand where you have the problem and raise up the other hand. And then the expectant is coming. Father, in Jesus' name, <clears throat> I pray for all your people. I pray, Lord, as they have come, they heard that was still the same mighty God from generation to generation. 
and that you are working wonders and they expect you to do wonders in their lives lord do each in every life in jesus name <clears throat> lord i pray those blind eyes be opened now deaf ears be opened now dumb tongues speak out in jesus name anything swollen there in your body hands tummy legs anywhere be healed in jesus name those who have been curable life-threatening diseases like cancer like hiv aids like tb and whatever other life-threatening disease be healed in jesus name those who are paralyzed having stroke having broken bones i pray those broken bones will join together right now and you'll not be able to walk because of paralysis the power of god come into your life right now rise up and walk in jesus name Lord, I pray that everywhere now, over here in Calabar and all the other regions and states where we are in Nigeria and all the various nations and those who are in their various homes, anywhere your people are now, I send forth the word of power unto everyone. Be healed in Jesus' name. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Every yoke in your life is broken by the anointing. Manifest yourself in every life, Lord. I thank you because I know it is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. I got it. I got it. Do what you couldn't do before. Put into manifestation now. It's right there. Miracle, healing, signs, wonders, right there now. Amen. It's done.